it really is possible for someone to not know and not be prepared. And all of a sudden they turn around and then there's this big storm, there's this big flood, and they're caught in an emergency because they weren't, weren't prepared. And that does happen. And I just want to <laughs> say that, you know, with hearing loss, sometimes we can get in our cocoon and uh, just focus on what we need to do each day. And, you know, there are people who don't, don't watch TV. Um, they can't hear the radio very well, so they don't turn that on either. And unless they're connected with other people around them, um, they might not be aware that there is a um, danger of a flood in their area. There is a danger of tornadoes or hurricanes. Um, you know, snowstorms, <laughs> we have been, this is our second day caught in the Midwest in a horrible snowstorm, and the trees are just bending over, broken. Um, we have about maybe 10 inches of snow so far, <laughs> so <laughs> I would say about 10. <laughs> and, you know, it's, 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 it's a struggle, you know, to make sure we don't lose our electricity and all this other kind of stuff. And for each, each situation, you know, there are, are different solutions. Um, one of them across the board, you really need to be aware <laughs> of your environment, of everything around you. And, and this is no laughing matter, uh, especially if a storm is coming and you say, ah, well, I'll just take this, the same roads I usually do to go home. And if you weren't listening, you know, they're warning people not to go in a certain area because of danger of floods. Um, you know, so it, it is really important to be aware of our environment, of what is going on around us, what streets we need to avoid, what kind of things we need to be prepared at home. So we're gonna talk a little bit about, um, a little bit about a little bit about everything here. Uh, so for weather, I, I would say if you drive, if you're working full time, um, it's really important to have things in your car that's going to help you, help you get out of a situation, whether it's floods, whether it is um, a snowstorm like this one, <laughs> uh, whether it is tornadoes, hurricanes. Um, some people... Some people, not everyone, but some people go out anyway. <laughs> when the situation is warning, uh, please don't go out. Um, you know, they really mean it. You know, there, there was a couple that I knew that, you know, they had to come back from their job from wherever, and they got stuck. They really got stuck. And so, but they had the tools in their car to be able to get themselves unstuck and get home. So uh, there are dangers and things that we need to be equipped for. Um, you know, in, in the Midwest and North, um, East, we, we already know we need to have a shovel in our car and flashlights and, you know, flashers and all kinds of things that, you know, to get us out of the situation. At home, if you're retired like myself, um, you know, we have a, a red bag in our main closet in the dining room, living room area, and we have all kinds of things here. If the lights go out, a lot of our members here use electrical recliner. So if the lights go out, <laughs> they're going to be stuck in that recliner for a very long time. So we have, you know, there's backup generator in the building so we can take the extension cord, plug it into the um, outlet that goes to the generator, and we can get people out of those recliners. And it's something you don't think about, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it, it's really important to have the equipment. You know, we have a first aid kit in there and all that kind of stuff in case somebody trips and falls while we're trying to figure out, you know, make sure everybody is safe. So. Among us, because it's assisted living, we're pretty mobile and, you know, aware of what's going on and, and what we need to do next. So, and, uh, and we have a couple of retired nurses in our group. So they obviously, you know, I 
go over with my wheelchair and I, <laughs> I zip over there and uh, I get the equipment and I go around, you know, trying to get everybody out of their uh, recliners if, if they're okay, if they have a need to get out of the recliners. Make sure everybody has their medications and flashlights, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really, you know, so what, what do you think you need in your car, in your house, in your RV, if you live in an RV, um, if you rent in a, in a home, you know, what kind of things do you think you need in that equipment? Uh, you know, first of all is awareness. So as that little, um, my little square there covering my <laughs> video, <laughs> square, it's a thumbnail, um, there are different kinds of storms. You know, storms in the desert, there are storms on the Atlantic coast, there are storms, electrical storms. So it, the, 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 the request here, or part of your plan is to be pre-prepared pre-prepared, so you, you have to think through on what you're going to have in your car, um, or if you don't drive, you know, to be connected with neighbors, you know, if something happens, uh, can you come over there, or they, can they pick you up and, and take you to a safe place? Um, can you stay with them, you know, until the storm passes? Uh, so it is being, thinking ahead pre-preparing for what is coming and to be aware you have to <laughs> listen to some kind of uh, news uh, what I have in case I miss the news or I get busy with something is a weather alert system and I'll post it here and I think I posted it before but this is one that is tried and true it flashes it vibrates it tells you what's going on in in your area, in your area. So uh, it's a very good tool to have, especially for those of us who have hearing loss. Sometimes we don't care about watching TV. Sometimes we really don't care about listening to the radio. <laughs> and so the weather alert fills in for that situation. And it'll alert you to tornadoes, hurricanes, other things. I've talked a little bit about this before. So that is one tool. I think it, I'd have to look at the cost, but uh, it's worth it, you know, and I have it over here on my table, and if I see it blinking, I need to pay attention <laughs> so um, and figure out what's going on. Um, so it, this is a, a matter of being pre-prepared, you know, knowing, knowing, having the knowledge of what is going on, what is coming. So you don't want to do it when it's already happened and your house is flooded. <laughs> so you want to pre-prepare, just listen, have a tool of your choice to alert you of what's going on, whether it's your neighbor, whether it's the weather alert, whether, you know, or your family members to let you know what's going on. Do you have equipment in your car or in your house uh, that you can use to get you yourself out of a pinch? whether it's a tornado, whether it is flooding, whether it is a lightning storm, you know, those things we need to take them seriously. Um, we want to avoid, you know, getting trapped in, in a bad situation. Um, you know, we have to think a little bit about our hearing tools. You know, if you wear hearing aids, if you have um, cochlear implants, uh, if you have a Baja, uh, or other hearing tools. I have a little um, kit on my table next to the weather alert. And if I had to leave in, in an emergency, I just grab that and I go because it has the batteries, uh, rechargeable batteries, has disposable batteries, and I can do whatever I need. I can survive at least five days uh, with, with my hearing apparatuses <laughs> for five days if we had to go somewhere. So, and, and that's important for, for anyone. If I'm deaf, I'm completely deaf, if I have to take off my cochlear implants to keep them dry, I can do that, you know. Uh, people can use their home signs or their own personal signs to indicate me we're going this way, 
you're staying here, you know, and I, I can get through, but um, I'm completely deaf. So it, you have to think of yourself and you have to think of those who are around you. So, um, and how you're gonna get yourself out of the pinch. If it's a hurricane, which lasts hours and hours, I've been through three or four hurricanes in my lifetime, um, truly you have to plan, and especially because I have a couple other disabilities and my deafness, sometimes it's just better to go to a shelter prior to the hurricane because with a hurricane you get advance warning. So uh, some people say, oh, I don't want to leave my puppies or I don't want to leave this or I don't want to leave that. And so you have to find a place, whether it's with friends, family, or a shelter, bring your puppies, you know. Uh, hopefully the, the shelter will understand, uh, but to protect your house, you're not gonna be able to, you know, if the hur depending on how big this hurricane is. Um, you, you have to have a pre-plan in case that's going to happen. It's, it's, not, it's not if, it's when because you know especially with climate change if you believe in climate change or not um it's going to happen and our storms are getting stronger and stronger and stronger so we have to kind of build up our 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 systems our tools uh to be able to keep ourselves safe right now we are in danger of losing our electricity because the trees are heavily, heavily uh, full of, of snow, and that puts them in danger of breaking and falling on the electrical wiring, and then we lose our electricity. So we don't know what's gonna happen, but we're just watching <coughs> and keeping everybody safe, and, and you know, we're prepared to the best of our ability. So, you know, for hurricanes, those last hours and hours and hours and hours, so you have to be pre-prepared and know where you're gonna go if you're in a danger zone. Um, you know, some people have hearing loss or they're deaf and what you're gonna need if you need to evacuate. So think of that, have a small kit ready to go and uh, so you can leave. It is scary to have to leave your home in a hurricane not knowing if you can get back or when you're gonna be able to get back to your neighborhood, but it is important. If you know that weather is gonna break out and there's a high possibility of tornadoes or twisters uh, in your area, then it's really important to have a place where you can hide. If you don't have a place to hide, then either you need to <laughs> construct one, uh, get one, uh, know where there is one, um, you know, or where you can go in the meantime. But twisters are fast and furious and are in seconds, will destroy a whole city. So you really need to be aware of where you can go and, and what you need to take with you. Um, in the desert, we have haboobs, and <laughs> I've been through a couple of those. <laughs> in Arizona. I lived there for six years. So you, you can't, it's really not recommended to be exposed to the habu because the sand in itself has viruses and bacteria. So you don't want that in, in your face or breathing it. You don't, you want to seek cover, stay at home, don't go out. <laughs> so just let it pass. <coughs> um, Let's see what else. Um, so yeah, it is just, you know, how to know. How will you remain alert of your environment is, is a big question. So that's the first one. Um, how to pre-prepare, how to be prepared for these uh, weather incidences. You know, depending on where you live, west coast, east coast, on an island, uh, in the Midwest, you know, in the center of a country, you know, what kind of weather do you go through every season, you know? And where to go? What's a good place for you to go and be safe? Um, 
I'm pretty safe, you know, in the building I'm at, but it could flood, it could, you know, something could happen. And here we get tornadoes, we get snowstorms, we get flooding. <laughs> so it's so much fun. <laughs> but yes, I've had to, well, not evacuate, but work with the city because our basement just really, really got uh, full of water. And um, the city's system and one of our rains just got overwhelmed. And then our, our basement was, you know, two feet underwater. So it, it's, you know, I had to make a lot of phone calls and they were slow to answer because everybody else's basement was full. Uh, so really it is, you know, and I had my shovel and everything else. <coughs> Sorry. So it's, it's really important to be aware, be prepared, and know where to go. If you can look at those three things, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be good. You'll be good for these weird storms that we're getting because they're getting bigger, they're getting stronger, and um, we're just going to have to adapt. So, so, you know, what you need to prepare, be aware Prepare yourself before the storm, before the incident, and know where to go. So if you can do those three things, you'll be good. And make sure you, for all your hearing instruments, make sure you have batteries that you have, you know, for at least five days. Make sure that you have all the basic things that you need, whether you have diet issues or you have pain, you know, medications all that kind of stuff, your puppies, your kitties, um, just pre-plan pre all of that. And it'll be much less stressful and you will keep yourself safe and healthy. <laughs> so, and help others, you know, if you have time and it's safe for you to do so, help others in planning. All right, so I don't wanna make this too uh, snoozy, <laughs> so. You know what to do with this. You know what I like you to do with this. Subscribe and like and make any comments you would like. All right. Take care. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next one.